into the world of relationships, business, and politics with hosts Lamar Clark, Dorshall Clark, and Dominique Hagler on People Think About It, where thought-provoking discussions abound. Hey, welcome to People Think About It. Today, we're getting into part two of Risa Tisa. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what we thought after we listened to the 50-some parts of Risa Tisa experience. Um, we have, I have, I have a couple of different outlooks on it um, when you're dealing with Risa Tisa because, you know, my, my, my point in life is always is his side, her side, and the truth. Uh, and we only hear her side of the story. We have yet to hear his side of the story totally of what went on. And that's not to say he wasn't a liar. You know what I mean? He may have been a habitual liar or, or what did she call him? Yeah, um, pathological. A pathological liar. He may have been all that, but we don't know how much of her story is really true. So we sat down, we listened to the 50 some episodes of Risa Tisa. And her life and her life with this guy that she said bamboozled her. One of the things that I did get out of it was that it seemed like she wanted to be married because she met this guy on on some kind of dating site and allowed him to move in. In this short period of time, they went through all these things and he moved in and, uh, you know, as time went on, they end up getting married, getting pre- getting pregnant and all that. So to me... She plays a big part in it as well because she allowed this guy to enter into her life. And then one of the other things I struggle with is she tells this story, but near near the end of the episode, she talks about how she went to Savannah, had to go down there to get him to sign the marriage certificate. I mean, divorce decree and all this other kind of stuff. Then after that, she kept digging in the man's life. I didn't get that part. If you got your divorce, if he's a pathological liar, why are you still trying to hunt down things about him? You let him go and go about your way. So we have our co-host, Dominique, in the house and our special guest, Mustafa. This is like one of Mustafa's top subjects that he likes to get involved in. <laughs> so we're going to go. May, Mustafa, give us your little part about what you think about Risa Tisa. Well, I mean, first, first of all, let's, let's move past the victimization. Her first mistake is wanting to have a certain sense of of, of justification. And, and, you know, it's done. Move on. And I know in this modern day world, uh, from what I surmise from it is, one, you rush into a relationship. I, I, I haven't seen this man physically. I don't know these people. But why are you airing out all of your personal relationship business? Now, there is always a financial connotation to it. So with the sensationalism, the way I look at it, like everybody's making money through the sensationalism by castigating and, and demonizing black black men. We're an easy target, right? It's a big dollar sign hanging on our head. Look, that's the bad guy. Just like Scarface. I'll be the bad guy. Because you had Sally, Jesse, Raphael, Ricky Lake, and Oprah for the past 40 years making money. This is an industry. Now you got all these other different sidebars, right? Everybody wants to give their exclamation of it. But I'll tell you this. That's your bed. You made it. You lie in it. And that's lie, like lie down, or you lie like the lies you told. Well, yeah, you lie down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Now, now we're on a scale of 1 to 10, I don't want to judge her, but uh, <laughs> you ain't the money. Okay, so let's you, let, three or four. Let's so talk are a, you giving relationship advice, or are you sharing your relationship of a bad advice? Yeah, bad, because, because then but, all the sidebars is now black men. Most black men are are uh, narcissistic sociopaths. Like, wait a minute. Well, well, let's let's do this. Wait a let's, minute. Let's 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 talk about some of the things that were pointed out to any of us that did not set well. So, uh, so Dominique, what yeah. was in that whole episode of those 50 episodes, what was pointed out to you that did not sit well with you, that you might have felt like she was telling more of or exercising and taking the truth or the incident a little further than what it really happened? Mm-hmm. So I think once I listened to everything and I actually looked like took it in, the part that kind of got me and threw me off is that 
as much as he could have been a liar, like you state he was, as much as he may didn't, you know, he didn't have this or have that on a financial stand, right? You also spoke about how he bought you a car, how he put or or put his credit out for this car. So we already knew in the story that it was two social security numbers. So something had to be right because I'm pretty sure he didn't go in there and get a car with a CPN. I just know that wasn't the situation. So as much as he is all these things, he did take care of the rent. He got you a new car in which you were driving. So something is missing. That's when the hole started coming in for me. I think the other hole for me was the knee situation that I don't think was too much talked about. She stated in the video that she believed that it was a symptom of something. We're not going to. Okay. Um, the symptom of that package, right? And so oh, for me, walk that back, walk that back. I might have missed that part. Mm-hmm. So, so there's some health concerns or scares going on there in, right. within the relationship, right? No, 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 no. We're not going to do that one. No, because even I've been charged with that. See, that's that's like like Cat Weave said. We're going to use that as tertiary, like, oh, he assaulted. Now that's almost like, that's a law. Mm -hmm. When you willingly and knowingly pass on something that you know that can be Mm -hmm. communicable, Mm -hmm. especially when it has something to do with a relationship, let's just say the word, uh, STD, Mm -hmm. then now... The other person is, I don't know where you got it from. It might have been HP. But, the, but they were living together. They were. And I guess. How my, come you didn't do a health screen before you actually got legally married? I agree. And I know nowadays when you go get married, it does say those things on there. Because I know when I went to go attempt to get married, y'all. Um, it says that. It says, you know, you did, you took this test. Y'all, you know, you have a whole sheet of what y'all need to do before y'all get married. Right. So if anything happens within that relationship, it's got to be something. Right. You know, you got to have y'all got it from each other. Right. Well, and, well, and things things tend to differate from state to state. Mm-hmm. And one part of the video, she stated that she knew about one marriage, but she didn't know about the other one because the lady told her about the other one. Mm-hmm. But I know in the state of Georgia, when you go into file for a marriage certificate, they ask you, "Have you ever been married before?" And if you say yes, you have to you have to tell them who you were married to, how long you was married to, and everything. So it, it's just like me; I've been married more than once. When I went in there and told them that I was married, they pulled up everybody that I was married to. Mm-hmm. You know, they pulled those married, and I guess I don't know whether they have to counsel them out or make sure that you're not married to this person and stuff. So things like that kind of stuff start not making sense to me because you started to believe what other people were telling you. Mm. And you already have instilled in your mind that this guy's, a, in your mind, a pathological liar. But then you basing stuff off of what other people tell you. You know, you called the brother, you called the cousin. We don't fool with him. We don't do this. Whatever. But when, you went, when he went back to Philly, he stayed with them. It, 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 you know, it, it's just like... The part, one of the parts that really got me too was this. When she said she was talking to the brother and she was like, well, he, he, he was talking to you every morning. So, I mean, we, we don't have to be in elementary school or something, but how many people would raise their hand if I'm on the phone and there's nobody on the other end? It's, it's not so much acting I can do. And if you're sitting there and saying, well, he said this, he said that. What, what technology nowadays, usually if, if I'm talking to Mustafa and talking to you, you sitting here talking to me and I got Mustafa on the phone, right? And he's saying this and that. More than likely, I hit the speaker button. Hey, Mustafa, they go down and you can say something to her. Mm-hmm. So at no time this guy was on the phone in the years that you dealt with him, you never, whoever these people was asking about who you were or how you doing and stuff, you never even spoke to them. So you sit there and this guy picks up this phone and talk and has a full blown conversation <laughs> and you don't know what's going on. That doesn't make sense to me. Hey, never put you on speakerphone. Ain't mm. no way. Ain't no way. Because somebody had to say, yeah, sis, what's up, sis, at some point. In right. Time. Because you build some kind of relationship with people. Right. Even if I don't see you physically, I build some kind of relationship you where I talk to you on the phone or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it just certain holes in it. Just didn't make sense to me, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, like when she spoke about when she rode all the way to Savannah, Augusta, uh, Augusta, Augusta, to make him sign the divorce decree, or even when she said that 
when she told him he had to go and she was saying, I'll beat your ass if you don't. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is a grown ass man. You mean he ain't got no fight in him? Cause she well, didn't... he didn't know. That was the thing. That was the knee part that I was referring to. Okay. Well, let's just explain the knee part. So basically he, you know, in the beginning, he, she told us that he stated that he was a football player for in a, uh, arena football or whatever. And he hurt his knee. And so the knee started to bother him, but the knee started to bother him to the point where he was peeing in Gatorade bottles. He was not eating and he was losing a substantial amount of weight. So by the time she asked him to get out, and that's why I said that was my questionable it, uh, situation, because my thing is, if you're saying that you feel like the knee is a symptom of something, you just had a baby with this man. You were all, Clearly, you were sleeping with him unprotected. And so and the knee couldn't like even if it was a symptom of something we're talking about six months plus that you know things are starting to happen in your system if you got something like that going on so you know I'm just a little confused and not saying you know some situations some so, people are blessed so when did so when did she actually recognize he was a pathological liar because the reason I asked that question because if I'm dealing with you, Mustafa, and I feel like you're a pathological liar, right? <laughs> if I feel that way, right? No, listen to what I'm saying. So at some point in time, I'm not going to go months and months and months and knowing that you are a pathological liar. It, it doesn't make house. sense. Yeah, she said it And I house. live in the same household you live in? But he paying the bills, so that's the part you got to listen to. See, that's the he part. He paying the bills, right? The bills are getting paid, and she said it in the video. She was like, I'm going to just be honest, even if it makes me look bad. I feel good. Um, I feel good. I get to keep all my check. He paying the bills. But then he don't got no money. Right. And then when he was when, when you went down in Augusta one time, you went down there and he called you. He called you after you done went through this divorce and stuff, and said, "Can you lend me some money?" Yeah, I caught that part. All right, and, and and this is where in Fonnie Willis can see the holes in this story because it's all BS. Fonnie Dell and cash only. Exactly. <laughs> right. Something ain't adding up. That's what I'm trying to say because I mean, one part is. Let's explain pathology. That means that it is a modus operandi. It is some type of incentive. So, sis, she got, you got what you wanted. And it's all about demonizing the man where even if he pays the bills and he's surreptitious and, and, and shady and vague about his past, you got what you wanted. Now, I didn't get to the part as far as uh, where the had a, a, a child. They had a whole child together, right? No, she actually had a miscarriage. She had a miscarriage. So she says. Well, well I don't know. Are, I don't know, know whether she provided the, 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 I don't know whether she provided the, documents the, the or whatever. The pathology is the fact that this is all sensationalism because now you're saying that even if a black man pays all the bills, uses his credit, you want to dwell into the one thing that you want to have. Total autonomy and control at the same time. That's the pathology. You lying. So you got what you wanted, and then how did the, the, the relationship dissolve? Who asked for the divorce? She she did. All right, the second BS. All right, so why you want, if he's paying all the bills, 99.9% of African women ain't walking away from that. Yo, mama, 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 you ain't, no, ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> there got to be a reason. He got to either be beating the brakes off of her, stealing her identity, or jeopardizing her career in the money. Which he never did. Yeah. That was the point. What's the word again? Go ahead. Now, let, 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 let Dominic say no, no, he, he never did. That's what I was, that was one what, of my things. Why did you ask for a divorce? Because of his shady past? You discovered that after the relationship. So what, what's the problem? See, that's, the problem and, and, and that's what I'm saying. That point. My, my, my point was, and I even shared it with my wife when we was talking about it. Like, okay, you got you got this divorce you wanted. Why are you still digging in this man's past? Listen, how that, they, the, the to me, that didn't make sense. How did they meet? They met online. All right. Number two is you didn't meet his parents and you claim they that they what it, what the parents were dead. His you parents were they, they verified that the parents yeah. were dead. They yeah, verified but, that. But the party is, guess what? You know who the pathological liar is in all this? Her. Who's making money off this story? Her. Well, we don't know. We can't sit here and say that he's not making. Um, what, what, Mustafa? No, you can't say that he's not. We don't even know. We don't know. Don't like know Dominique like? shared earlier. What, what does he look wait like? Wait a minute. We do, they they show him online and everything. You, you can't. They've showed pictures. He on had two online. profiles, didn't he? He had more than one. I profile? mean, he wasn't a bad looking guy. No, no, no. But you said he had more than one profile. With two no. different names. 
That's and then when she called her ex wife, the ex wife goes, Oh, what name did he use with you? I don't think he even, even existed. I don't think this is a real person. <laughs> well, I'm saying the reason it has to be a real person because she talked to the brother, she talked to the aunt, she talked to the lady he stayed with down in the The Gosha, mama best friend. The mama. So she talked to people that knew, and the people in the family was like, we and don't the people on Facebook, and, and we Facebook don't too. we don't f with him. The, yeah. the, we don't. He he supposedly not have sisters and not have all these family members. He said he had, but they had. She did talk to people that could verify he was who he was. Now, when she did that, it was about what what name did he give you and things of this nature. But the thing about it, he is an existing person, and they met online. Mm-hmm. But my thing is this: you met online. At one point in time, at one point in time, did you realize this person was a pathological liar? And if you realized that in the beginning, why did you stay so long in that relationship? He was paying the bills. How long? Exactly. How long? And, and that's, to me, that's where you fell and, and at. you were desperate and you wanted a husband, you wanted a family. And so it didn't really matter what he was saying to you. As long as them bills were paid and you could keep your check, as long as you had that baby, you was good. As long as he was going to be your husband, you was cool because you felt like you were getting older and your time was running out. And, your desperation and that's a good led, point you made. Thank you. Yeah, Thank your you. desperation led Thank you to this point right here where now you're doing 50 series on TikTok. Because to me... To the extent that you're going to now to investigate who this guy was, why didn't you do that in the beginning? No, right. you about to say this joker, right? You you about to say that because at the same time, how long does it take? The number two is how long did it last? And I, I'm in complete agreement with, with you because you caught the fuck you said. When you attempt to do something, like you, you attempted to enter into a full complete relationship. Mm. That means nothing is left off the table. Right. Right? And also this part where I'm seeing is becoming popularized where, you know, 50-50 on the bills. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Why is it that you don't want to pay 50-50 in a relationship, but you want half when you leave? What's that part? So everybody else well, does Well, if you're paying all the bills, you're paying 100%. And if you're paying 100 percent when you get relieved, that means her 50s. No, I'm gonna give you the 100. No, I'm just I'm so, so, so that's no, why no, I mean, no. as a as a as a man, I understand when you say 50 50, you pay out paying, I'm paying, we we balancing this thing out. But when I'm paying them all, that's a hundred percent. So <laughs> that's, that's, when you leave, I, I need my foot. <laughs> and that was the thing too, because that was another point when they got the divorce or when she filed for divorce or whatever. Um, the police told her, like, hey, you can't put him out. Like, if he want to come back, he has all rights to come back well, to his I, I, house. How did the police get involved in this? Because she but, called him because he called her and said he was on his way back home. Yeah. He was coming home. To whose house? Her. It was his, her house. Theirs. Theirs. No, no. Who? His. Theirs. He paying the bill. You know, I ain't in all these pronouns now. <laughs> it was her house. It was her house. How did it end up being her house? Because it she had the house before she met right. him. That's okay. What they I, now, him. the part is the fact that if he's paying all the bills... In your house. Now, that's his mistake. I would have never advised any grown man over the age of 25 to move in a woman's house because she can put you out that house. But you No, can't, not no, in the state cannot. of Georgia, you, you can't. Can. No, you can't. Let me tell you something. And <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what I know, not what I heard. For all you listeners out there that lives in the state of Georgia, that has someone living with you, if they are there more than 30 days, and they're getting you, there. you have to evict them. They have to go through the eviction process. You cannot put them out. I got, I got the magic compound word for that. Unless it's involved domestic violence. They got to go. No, they do not have to go. Whose name on this lease? It, it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't they, matter. they. I'm telling you, with legal, I'm telling yes. you something I experienced myself. So they both going to jail. No, nobody's <laughs> going to jail. You just can't. You, you can't if, kick if, them out. If, if, and let me tell you something. In the state of Georgia, if you say it came to me and said, "Hey, Unc, you know what? Things are a little rough for me right now. I need somewhere to stay." And I said, "Well, come on. You can stay at my house. You stay at my house for thirty days." Then all of a sudden, I said, "Well, Mustafa, you you said you only needed thirty, you know, a couple of days or something like that." Now it's been it's been more than thirty days, so I said, "Hey, my man, you got to go." You say, "I ain't going nowhere." Guess what? I can call the police or whatever. 
You have clothes there. You got mail there. You got mail coming there. Yep. You, you get, have to evict that person. Yes, and I'm telling you, that's the law in Georgia. Yes. Now, where it work at somewhere else, I can't say anything about that. But in the state of Georgia, that you have correct. to evict the person. Once a person lives in, stays in your home for 30 days or more, you have to go through the eviction Look, process. On the 31st day, because we're in a probate state, but what about if it involves restraining orders, domestic that's violence? That's different. But, that, but we're talking about something that, different. Yeah, that's different. He didn't have, they didn't, they have, didn't have all that. Because he's on his way back to the house, right? And he informed her. She calls the police and said, well, ma'am, he, he, he has the right to be there. He has the right to enter to but the home. Even when, she, even when she got him to sign the divorce decree, he didn't even read it. He just signed it. And then she came back one and said he didn't even read, read what he signed because now all that stuff he had in the house and the things that supposedly have been important to him, I own it now mm-hmm. because he legally signed it over to me. Right. You know, because she was talking about how she was throwing things out and then things that was she thought may have been important. She she let her, she put it back in a, a book bag. Mm-hmm. And when she put it back in the book bag, because she thought he was going to come back and get it, because she said when he left, the the little bit of things she he took, she thought he was going to come back and get the rest of his stuff, and he never did. So that's when she went to Augusta mm-hmm. with the divorce papers, found him. You need to meet me at the UPS store because it had to be, you know, notarized. notarized. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, when she got down there, come to find out he's still a pathological liar. He's living <laughs> in his car. He smells. He's this. He's that. He's hungry and all this other kind of stuff, right? But you went and signed that divorce decree. So, um, you know, know, when you look at a, it's a it's it's a wild ride of a story. Um and now, you know, he's coming out with his part. He's on podcasts and all of this stuff saying, you know, none of this is true. Now we now Well, well that's I, when I go with say his side, her side, and the well, truth. Well, I, I can say she is correct on the lying part because we didn't see him screenshot himself in Netflix that's out in Bangkok or wherever he said it ain't even over here saying he got a Netflix deal. Um, no, um, you know, and then I don't know, I guess for me, it was just too many things. Like how far are you going to go? I, I don't think I've ever met a person that I've never met. Like I've never met, um, like I've never met their family. You know, right. Even in the talking stage, I'm going to see somebody, a cousin, a brother. And I get it. They was in, you know, it was COVID time. I get it. But at some point we had to see somebody. Like somebody, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I think they did see two people, but they weren't relatives. I forgot who they were, um, but she actually seen them, like physically so met them. What, what about his teammates on his so-called arena football? There was no arena football. So there what about some... what about coworkers from Apple? Well, no, he he was he worked at a VP. A VP. He, he was, was VP. supposed to be a VP, but she even stated that she did this intensive research on some Google and said, "Well, the bank account." he showed me was a screenshot. Mm-hmm. The car he showed me was a screenshot. Mm-hmm. So even when she said that, I was like, so he showed you this car, but you never actually seen the car. Right. And then he took you to the quote unquote building that's downtown Atlanta. And he called the quote unquote security guard that was supposed to let y'all in. But just ironically, none of the security guards are supposed to be on there all the time. They're not there. Right. And y'all go home after that. Like, make it make sense. I like, mean, at what point, at what point do you be like, damn, I know I can't be this desperate. Right. Like, at what that's, point? That's, that's, and, and then we have to step back and say this. It's, it's, it's holes that we see in the story. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not to say she's not telling the truth, not to say she's lying, but it's holes that we see in the story. And to me, if we can see the holes somewhere down the line, you should have seen something wasn't right early in the beginning that you had this long term. And I'm with you, Dominique. I just think it's to the point she just started. My clock is ticking. You know, this guy's willing to do this. Do and that. He wasn't a bad looking guy. Either. You know? So that's another thing, you know. When society, when, and she said it, you know, I'm a, I'm a big girl. Yeah, she big girl. You know girl. what I mean? And so, I'm a big girl. And not, uh, hey, listen, I'm here for the big girls. But, you know, 
In her mind, it was probably like, you know, he's a good looking guy. He's six four, you know, nice little stature. Okay, cool. Okay, he want me. You know, okay, let but, me see but, some. And, and, and you know, the other thing that kind of bothered me, even if you were a pathological liar, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody loved you. Somebody cared about you. She made it like nobody cared about the this aunt, dude. The quote unquote aunt, the mama best friend. She she was all right. She would let him stay. You but but remember, she said that she was calling her to get the okay for him to stay there because she kind of didn't trust him. Mm-hmm. You know, she was like, "I kind of don't trust him," so I'm just trying to find out. And this, I think that's yeah. yeah, I think that's when she found out when she said something about the wife, and she said, "Which wife are you talking about?" Mm-hmm. So that's when I started saying, "Wait a minute, hold on, something about it," because I know for sure in the state of Georgia, if you've been married, they know it. Mm-hmm. Yes, they have to because yeah. I, I just I just went through that. Well, we was uh, taking care of some family business when I just got back from uh, Alabama, and you know when you're selling off some of the property and then you're dealing with heirs' property and the legality is is when something is passed on, the rights of inheritance to go through all the fifty states because like Georgia is, is a uh, a probate state. We went up here to um, to the courthouse and we're all related. And now, Dorshell is Mrs. Dorshell Clark, and she's going. To, they're going to ask. And I'm going to be like Auntie. They're going to ask about the husband before him. You're going to say, "Well, my father. You know, my father is deceased. I don't know my mother. I don't know where she is. Did she pop up? And she says, "I got claim to that property. Also, I've seen it over and over again. So it's the same with, with marriage. They ask my mother, "Is your husband? You know, he's deceased." What about you? And my cousin cracked jokes. I ain't never been married. Matter of fact, his, I brought up their last name. His girlfriend or baby mama's last name is Hagler. So my mom was trying to figure out who, oh. who the folk is, right? Yeah, no way. And I was, you know, <laughs> Tennessee. So we trying to figure out, you know, we pull up names, dates, facts, figures. And like you said, attempt. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let you slide with that. To quantify that, you're about to make a serious life decision. Mm-hmm. Getting married. Getting married. Like we yeah. said in the military, right? Be careful. Because you're about to make a serious career-changing decision. Then on top of that, if you don't want to get that all that information, I'm sorry, Senator, I'm not at the liberty to confirm or deny. There's a lot of truths left out. And just because it's on the cybernet, you're telling us that you was that desperate, big, little, small, nothing. I'm not trying to <laughs> you, that. you know, I'm sitting here looking at these Oreo cookies. Oh, God, and this, 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 this relationship... That she explains is almost like this Oreo cookie. You know how they say it. You, you, you open it up and you lick the middle. You got a bottom and you got a top. And somewhere in that middle, somebody licking, somebody telling a lie. Yeah. Somewhere in the middle, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's old. So, so when you look at that, you know what I mean? And like there was that old saying, a kid that eat the middle of an Oreo first and save the chocolate on the outside Damn. for last. So... I was like, "What's he having me those cookies?" I knew you. I was like, yeah. "Nah, not today." So, so, so when you when you look at her of all the things she has said and done, and like I said, I'm not cookies. I'm not here because he was dipping them cookies right. in that milk, and ain't nobody had a sip of that milk in a while, right? Mm. These cookies yeah. good. You so I'm, small, I'm baby. I'm mm-hmm. not here to say. I'm not here to. To say, and I want my audience to know, we're we're not here to say that what she's saying is not the truth. We're not here to say what she said is the truth. Mm-hmm. Like I keep uh, saying that we're saying it from what we analyze in our perspective of Risa Tisa. You know, so we don't know how long uh, or if we're going to ever hear from this gentleman of his version of Risa Tisa. You know, so it's gonna be like R. Kelly in the closet. It's gonna be serious. One, two, three. I mean, I'm not gonna. I love my people, but it's it just like I shake my head. I'm not gonna be raunchy and and and, and you know deplorable like the comedian, you know, Corey Holcomb. If he was speaking on something like that, but I mean, because it's just comedy. But this right here is people, like black folks. Wait, what's going on? But 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 you know what, man? I I, I just go back to even at looking at the online. Dating experience. I mean, some people have successful with that online date. You got to sign up for eHarmony, though. You can't go on Tinder. You got to right. pay that through. Oh, black five. people meet and... No, you, if, if you ain't paying for it, it ain't... But, but no. you know, but but the the thing that I'm saying is is that I'm not saying that online dating does not work. Because I, I, I know some people say they've met their wives and husbands online. Uh-huh. But 
for me, even if I use that uh, that app out there for online dating, even if I use that and I met somebody, first of all, I met you online. So my instinct is going to kick in to do some kind of research on you because yes. the majority of the people are on a line. Mm-hmm. The majority of them. I would say if we took 100 people that was on any of those uh, dating sites, of the ones that you're paying for. 90 percent of them probably got a lie somewhere. And, you know, I I, 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 I I give you one experience. I know before I met my wife, this was years and years ago. So I want her to know that that I didn't even know you then. But one time I was on a dating site, right? So I on this dating site, I see this young lady. She putting on it. She's a model. Boom, boom, boom. You know. This. So we decided to meet. So when we decided to meet, she tells me about this event that's down near the King Center, right? So I'm like, okay, a little art and jazz type thing. I'm like, okay. So this is when I knew something was wrong. Because we were supposed to meet. She told me about the event. Meet me there at 8 o'clock. I get down there. You know, I'm prompt, dude. I get down at 8, 8, 8.30, no show. 9 o'clock, no show. By 9 o'clock, the band is setting up. Come, I know a guy. that. Well, I met a guy who's from Baltimore, where I'm from. So we get to chit-chatting. Now it's 9.30, 10 o'clock. She's still in no show. Make a long story short. And this is the terrible part about online dating. So, they, me trying to be a gentleman, they had food at this event. So, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to eat until she get here. So, I'm trying to be, well, by the time 10 o'clock rolls around, all the food is gone. Mm. The band is in their set. About 10, 15, I get this call on my phone. I'm outside. Now, it's dark. We're down near the King Center. I go out there to meet this woman at this car. This joker probably weighed. 265. Oh, man. <laughs> man, I was so mad. And you know what? You know what? And she had the nerve to ask me, do I look like my picture? <laughs> Hell no. That's what I'm saying. No, you that don't look like your picture. Is, you, don't, you, don't, you don't look she, nothing she like that picture. She did like, she but, like Smokey on but, Friday. But what it was, <laughs> the picture she had on the dating site was a picture she had Teen. probably 15 years ago. What she looked like 15 years ago. But... Right there, my experience of a dating site, that was my end of a dating site. I, I, I can't do this because I can't do all these lies. You know what I mean? You, you're not, you're not going to expose who you really are. And I say that to say, even with this young lady, Arisa Tisa, you met this guy online and you did not do your homework to find out who he really was. You just, and, and we go back to what you're saying, Dominique. I think, and I, I, when you said it, it really made me start thinking. Your, your, your clock is ticking. You know how old is Risa Tisa? Anybody know? I know she was saying that the pregnancy was going to be um, difficult, high risk. Yeah, so, so I know she was older than thirty five. Okay, yeah, I she so, that. so, so, mm-hmm. so you for most women, I think I could say when your clock, biological clock, is ticking. I think that most women tend to settle for some things they don't have to settle for because my biological clock is ticking, you know? And I think in this case, this woman biological clock was ticking. No matter what lies he felt to fed to her, she believed in those lies. Mm-hmm. And then when things started to turn, didn't weren't going her way, you're a pathological liar. And then this, that, and the other. But I, I promise you, I would have known that. It, it don't take me. It wouldn't took me no months to find out whether you're a pathological lie. I'd have found out in a couple of days because I'm going to ask some questions. And I hear you stuttering and all that. Now, I know <laughs> there's some problem here. Well, I mean, but this, I, this, I, this, I ask this. you, hey, you know what you ever been married for? And, and, and then you talk, oh, uh, 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 yeah. See, see what happened with. No, because, you know, the part of desperation, she putting the labor on somebody else. Because he told a a worse lie than somebody's pathological, she lied to herself. Now you you, you know where you from? You know. You well, know, I always say that the I'm saying is, lie. if you can lie to yourself, you can lie to anybody. No, no. The worst lie you can tell is the lie to yourself. Her whole intention was to rush to settle down. She excused a lot of behavior and, and a lot of information because you know when it comes to dating sites, be upfront. The women are you know, my friend. I sent up all of them. Be up front, cause I, I, you know me, I go around and around the mulberry bush. So I listen. That you did. When it come, when it, <laughs> no, but when it comes to them dating sites, you already going. You know what you're intending. I just smashed off Tinder. 
I mean, straight up, anything organically, right? You got to get so, to know so, that person. So you say you smashed off a Tinder. Was that your intention from the beginning? Yes, and that was hers. Right, so that's what Tinder is basically set up for. Exactly, exactly what it's set up for. Yeah. And, and these we, people that's on it know this. Man, when we when we met each other, it's free. That's what I'm trying to say. Then it's number free. two, number two. When I met somebody, now this is the thing about meeting somebody through the internet. I met somebody, so the young lady said, "When we met, we I picked her up for her, her job. I was going to hang around the, the park. It was having a little festival." She said, mm, I, "I thought you was going to be taller." I didn't respond. Cause I knew it wasn't going to. So that either. right there, she thought you were going to be taller. So no, that I, was, and I thought she was going to be prettier. Okay, so what I'm saying is, both of y'all had a lie going on at that point in time. Y'all should have went y'all separate and ways. We went our, no, this is somebody different that I met through Instagram. I yeah. mean, it's just like, but Tinder, pe- people Tinder tell me is straight to the point. Listen, Tinder what's happening? Point. Swipe left, swipe right. Now I, I know I've had some females that I've had conversation with. And some of them tell they go on some of these sites because it's a free meal. You know, like this is this is dinner. Because most people are like let's go out to dinner and this and that and other. You know, so they they use it as to get a free hold meal. Up, and up. I just think that that's tacky uh, because uh, no, 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 no. it is that no, you can't I'm, even afford to buy a meal for yourself. Uh, uh, why? Why would you want to be around? I know it's tacky it? because okay, organically, if I meet you in the club or I go on a first date. But when I met this young lady, I said, let's meet up. It's somewhere safe at the restaurant. So the, I say to Joe, I was going to tell you yesterday, when these girls, they sipping on them them oysters, right, or at Spawn Divots or whatever, he's like, I just want to let you know, uh, I, I I don't put out, uh, I don't have sex on the first date. I'm like, okay, well, just to let you know, I don't pay on the first date. <laughs> I mean, 50-50, right? Well, you can make up joke. your mind, man, because when we had that discussion, you said you paying. But when you come out your mouth, you say something tacky. Like, I've been in the club. So, so there's a difference. No, 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 no. no. If, she don't say, you... if she say something tacky, then you're going to tell her she no, got No, and they can act tacky, too. <laughs> you come out your mouth, Smith. I'm going to say So we sitting there, and it was a, a place that was formerly open around the corner up here, Old No Cross Road. It was a Bermuda Bar. Now, they had a nice buffet. Ladies come in. And I'm upstairs in the cigar bar with my with my partner. So they and you know, they most attractive females in there. But the real one, the down to earth one was a uh, uh financial manager and planner at, at Verizon. You know, I like that corporate. So the sex So it doesn't matter what she looked like as long as she corporate. But see the genuine <laughs> see men go off looks. But then afterwards when you get past that and you see that genuine person, we're sitting in the bar and I complained about the service or whatever and and the bartender that we were acquainted with, she said, mm, I can't stand with females do that. But I had already offered. I said, ladies, you're sitting here and we, we, you know, we're, we're socializing, we're conversing. Would you care for an appetizer? Would you care for a drink? So she so made you was going to buy her appetizer no, I, and a drink I or did. one or the other? No, I bought both of them appetizers oh, okay. and drinks. I'm, I'm going to know some right? females. Here, I'm going to send them your way. Now, here come the <laughs> fight. So it was in the middle of the capital party. And, you know, and uh, my best friend was like, what's going on? So... One partner, a simp. This is what simp do. So he walks past it, man. They fine. I said, yeah, I know. I had already made my intention. I'm going straight beeline. When Cap was upstairs, he's like, man, what's up with your partner, man? Man, we bought them drinks. Do you know that they with us? And my partner was like, man, that ain't got nothing to do with me. So, I mean, it, it goes both ways. That's tacky, right, on both sides from the men and the women. All right, so, so your intention is because you bought, bought drinks, you bought her, and you supposed to stalk her for the rest of the night. So, oh, so, man. so let me let me ask you this to Miss Dominique over mm-hmm. here. Yes, this happened, Miss Miss Dominique. So I, my 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 question would be to you: um, If you met a young man on a dating site, how as a female, how would you approach it? Which, that's just wait a minute, wait a minute, which, hold, calm down. <laughs> now, how would you? Give our listeners, our female listeners, what? How would you approach meeting a gentleman online? Um, well, for one, uh, I need your name. I need your. I need your government. I need to know. I don't want a little shooty and all of them. I don't want none of that. Um, but um, you know, I just feel like pay. I'm gonna say pay. Don't go to Tinder. Don't go to Hinge. Don't go to Facebook dating. You want to find somebody that's gonna be serious. Take yourself to eHarmony and do do the homework. So eHarmony basically does a background check on these people. Yes, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for them to, 
you know, check for all the bells and whistles and everything like that. And then, you know, once you decide that, okay, you know, I'm trying to see what Rick about, cool. You know, then you do your research. Um, well, how about I, Christian Mingles? Is that a good say? I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I you know, know, they got a site out there called Christian Mingle. Yeah, know. You know, know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't know if they, you know, as good as E Harmony. I don't know what because you know you Christian. might got God doing, a, you know, betting them. Well, God, no, 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 one time when we was at work when we we, we first like my my friend came to to attend whatever we just got back from uh, a, a powwow impromptu. Uh, birthday, her birthday passed, whatever. We known each other. I met her when I, I met you. So I remember we was at work and we was getting acquainted. And you know, the young lady that was working around me, and she was complaining about you know dating and relationships. And you exhorted her to go on a POF. And that's what I'm telling oh, you. you never heard? No. So this was years ago at its initial when it was just a startup. Mm-hmm. And I remember you saying that. And this is we talking about 10, 15 years ago. This is right. a long time. This is like right before I met you. So we, we we just acquaintance. So and he was still we was working there at and it was it wasn't even it was the name the name of the mall was different. Mm-hmm. So we come around to socialize and we need to have a break and they was like, P O F what do you mean He said plenty of fish. So when I I looked it up, I, I you know, everything is up and down, but when you exhorted the young lady, okay, you, you have some relationship issues and dating, you know, you want to find a nice guy, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try online dating, right? Now we know that it's trash. Right, mm-hmm. it's it's you know, but people have approached me and said, Dad, I haven't seen you somewhere before, or don't I know you, whatever, even out in public. All right, I just have one of those faces, but we know. Oh, where they seen you, they seen you on Plenty of Fifth, they seen you on, on Black stage. People Meet, they oh, seen you on Tinder, Trinder, Flip Right, Flip Left. Yeah, I seen you, man. Yeah. Matter of fact, I swipe right and you never replied. Yeah, it, it happened. It, it was like, and, it, and it, one young lady, I was like, I met her. In or I'm organic. I'm the they major. They want to know if you about to run that twelve play. That's what they're trying to see. Yeah, they trying to think you are Kelly. <laughs> twelve play. I met, I met a girl at at the Publix. One step I in my room of fun. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> chains and whips up in Anyway, I met a young lady in. She had just moved here from New York, so she claimed. Met her at the grocery store. Right, she's with this old whose child is that? I'm doing my work right there. Whose child is that? Whose car is that? Where you live at? Then, I didn't hear anything. She ghosted me. Did nah, you buy groceries? Hell no. I ain't feeding nobody else's kids. Shit, I got to feed mine. So, <laughs> so, so, she hit me on Tinder. Uh, she hit me on Tinder. I had to get off of it. I'm like, wait a minute. How is it that we we met up in real life? You ghost me, and then you like me, and I'm I'm bad. I know I'm that bad. And mm. then I said, wait a minute. We matching on, on, on Tinder in virtual space. Right and meet in real life, and you don't even remember that you met me, got my card, and everything. Yeah, well, that's the way it is, you know. But uh, I'm a classic you know man. But um, <laughs> you know, like I said, we we want to let we we, we want to let our listeners right. know that you know um, everybody has their viewpoint about uh, Risa Tisa. We've had our own viewpoints about Risa Tisa. Um, None of these things are personal. We just want you guys to know that we've just given our viewpoints. Yes. We want you to know that, uh, you know, we found holes in the story. And maybe they may be true. Maybe they may not be. Um, we sat back there and we just asked you once again, if you want to be involved in People Think About It, come on the show and talk about the hot topics. We, we welcome you. You can go to peoplethinkaboutit.com. Or you can go and email us at people think about it at gmail.com. You can subscribe to our page. Uh, we on YouTube. Uh, we on all the uh, podcast outlets. Uh, so, you know, keep on listening to us. Uh, we wish, wish Risa Tisa great in life and hope that she find. Well, she said she wasn't never doing marriage again, but we oh. don't know. She might need some more money, so she got to come up with 60, 60 oh, well, things now. Well, guys, make sure y'all tune in next week. You know, we'll be back. Next week's topic will be on Portia in this 15-month marriage, so stay tuned for that. Yeah. So, we, 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 so Hot topics. Uh, eventually, uh, we want to tell y'all folks, we, we will be going live. Uh, we, we will come up with a date on going live and everything. So just again, once again, listen to people think about it. Uh, contact us. And if you want to be a guest, come uh, go to people think about it.com. Figure out all our guest thing, but surely subscribe to us. Check us out on Facebook. 
uh, YouTube and Instagram. We're on all the outlets. So we want to thank you guys once again for listening uh, to People Think About It. You have been listening to People Think About It. Be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your friends so that you never miss an episode. A new episode drops every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Thank you for listening. 